Fellow Bahamians and residents, good afternoon. The COVID-19 pandemic is still raging around the world and is getting much worse in some countries. The world is still in a global health emergency with some health officials warning that things may get worse and even worse and even worse. According to the World Health Organization, the world is approaching 19 million confirmed COVID-19 cases, including nearly 600,000 deaths. The highest number of confirmed cases is in the Americas with approximately 7.3 million cases. The number of deaths and confirmed cases continue to rise with the pandemic much worse in some countries and areas of the world, including countries frequented by Bahamians. In neighboring countries, hospitals are overwhelmed and deaths are increasing. For some places, it is unclear when or how they get this virus under control. While there are countries that will continue to make progress, such progress can be reversed because of what is happening in the neighboring and other countries. Progress can also be reversed because of how citizens and residents within countries are following or ignoring health guidelines. My fellow Bahamians and residents, regrettably, the situation here at home has already deteriorated since we began the reopening of our domestic economy. It has deteriorated at an exponential rate since we reopened our international borders. As of today, July 19, 2020, the current Bahamas numbers are as follows. The Ministry of Health has confirmed 15 new cases of COVID-19. The total number of cases are now at 153. According to the surveillance unit, there have been 49 new cases since borders fully opened on July 1st. 31 of those new cases were recorded on the island of Grand Bahama. Inagua still remains COVID free. Meguana remains COVID free. Acklands, Crooked Island and Long Key remains COVID free. Abaco remains COVID free. Ragged Island and San Salvador remains COVID free. Elutra and Spanish Wells, including Harbor Island, still today remains COVID free. But that does not mean that we must drop our guard. My fellow Bahamians and residents, as I have said before, our battle with COVID-19 will last for some time. We are in a marathon, not a sprint. This is a marathon demanding discipline, endurance, demanding resilience, and requiring determination. This is a marathon requiring agility, a quick change of course when necessary, and decisive action. Like other nations that responded well at the outset of the pandemic, the Bahamas is working through the same balancing act. We are trying to get Bahamians back to work 
and to promote economic activity while also limiting the spread of this deadly virus. We are trying to open parts of our economy and our society while promoting and requiring health measures to protect lives. The Bahamas is reviewing and being guided by what in this moment in history appears to be the most effective practices from around the world. You have seen from media report that quite a few places, including countries that responded well at the outset, have had to reimpose curfews, lockdowns, and other restrictions. Some countries, for the very first time, are requiring the wearing of masks in public places. This is the new normal for the entire world until there is a vaccine. This virus is very, very infectious. It is easy to catch and extremely easy to pass on from one person to another. The world will be in this cycle of opening up, reviewing community spread, and tightening up again for quite some time. And we as Bohemians must be prepared for this. The Bahamas must be totally prepared for this. My fellow Bohemians and residents, our current situation demands decisive action if we are to avoid being overrun and defeated by this virus. We cannot allow our hospitals to be overrun. Many priorities must be balanced, be they health, social, or our economy. Chief among these, though, is health. We cannot risk the deaths of Bahamians and our residents. We must be resolved in our collective willingness to save lives. So, today, I am announcing a number of measures we are reinstating to address the number of new cases we are seeing here at home. My government has consulted heavily with health officials. We are taking these strong actions to save lives. I understand the frustration and the disappointment of many Bahamians and residents that may ensue as we re-implement certain restrictions. But as a country, as a country, we have to do what is right and we have to do what is necessary. If we do not take these measures now, we will pay a higher price and deadlier price at a later date. At the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we acted early to prevent widespread sickness and death. We must do so once again. My fellow Bahamians and residents, the series of measures to address the current increase in confirmed COVID-19 cases are as follows. International commercial flights and commercial vessels carrying passengers will not be permitted to enter our borders except for commercial flights from Canada, the United Kingdom, and the European Union. This will come into effect as of Wednesday, the 22nd of July, 2020, at midnight. Bahamas Air 
Bahamas Air will cease outgoing flights to the United States of America effective immediately. Let me repeat. Bahamas Air will cease immediately outgoing flights to the United States of America. To accommodate visitors scheduled to leave after Wednesday, the 22nd July 2020, outgoing commercial flights will be permitted. Private international flights and charters for Bahamians, residents, and visitors will also be permitted. Pleasure crafts and yachts will likewise be permitted. All returning residents, Bahamians, and visitors by air or by sea from overseas will require a negative RT-PCR COVID-19 negative test result from an accredited lab. You will be required to present your documents to immigration officials upon arrival. And these tests must be taken no longer than 10 days before the date of your travel. All of these individuals must also have an approved health visa to enter our country. Bahamians and residents returning to the country who are not in possession of a negative RT-PCR COVID-19 test result from an accredited lab will be required to self-quarantine for 14 days upon return via the Hubcat monitoring device. For travelers who do not agree to Hubcat monitoring or whose premises are not approved by the Ministry of Health for quarantine, they must quarantine at a government identified facility at their own expense. At the end of the quarantine period via Hubcat or at the facility, COVID-19 testing will be required also at the traveler's expense. The government will not be responsible for arrangements with private employees. The quarantine period will be counted as vacation for public servants. If vacation time is not an option, the public servant salary will be deducted. We are aware that the cessation of international commercial flights may affect students returning to or commencing college or university abroad. We intend to address this matter in a subsequent communication by government officials. While every family must make their own decision on students studying overseas, parents and students may wish to consider the resumption, resumption of studies beginning in January 2021. Domestic travel will continue to be permitted. However, I wish to advise that all travelers traveling domestically within the Bahamas are still required to complete an electronic health visa prior to departure at travel.gov.bs. Any airline or commercial sea vessel that permits a passenger on board without the required health visa will face a fine of $500 per passenger who is not in compliance. And that does not exclude Bahamas Air. I also wish to announce that on the advice of health officials, 
and out of an abundance of caution, public and private beaches and parks on New Providence, Paradise Island, Rose Island, Athel Island, and surrounding Keys will be closed until further notice, effective tomorrow, Monday, the 20th of January, 20th of July, 2020, at 5 a.m. Restaurants at Araki and Potter's Key will also be required to close effective Monday, 20th of July. These closures will remain in place until we are able to ensure that better social distancing can be practiced and enforced. The public health team will monitor the epidemiological situation in New Providence as it relates to the number of daily COVID-19 cases over the following 72 hours. I must tell you, if cases continue to spike and increase, my government is prepared to implement more restrictive measures. And this is not our wish. But if it has to be done, it will be done. We will continue to be guided by the recommendations of our health professionals. Fellow Bahamians, Grand Bahamians and residents. Grand Bahama has seen a resurgence of COVID-19 cases after being COVID-19 free for a little over two months. The increase in cases coincided with the reinstitution of international flights and passenger sea transport. Regrettably, surveillance teams have traced many of the cases to Bahamians returning to the Bahamas. Because of the increase of COVID-19 confirmed cases in Grand Bahama, and after consultation with health officials, I wish to announce the following measures for Grand Bahama. A new curfew for Grand Bahama will be implemented from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily, starting tomorrow, the 20th of July. All public and private beaches and parks will be closed until further notice, effective Monday, the 20th of July, 2020, at 5 a.m. International and domestic borders will be closed to all incoming and outgoing flights and sea vessels to and from Grand Bahama, except for emergencies and to transport essential services and goods. Effective midnight, Wednesday, the 22nd of July, 2020. Ferry boat operations between East End, Grand Bahama, and Crown Haven, Abaco, will not be allowed. And this will take effect tomorrow, Monday, the 20th of July at 5 a.m. Health officials on Grand Bahama have recommended stricter enforcement of social distancing and mask wearing with fines for non-compliance. To address the potential for community spread, indoor dining will be closed effective Monday the 20th of July. Outdoor dining, takeaway and curbside delivery will be permitted. Bars remains closed. All fish fries, inclusive of but not limited to Eight Mile Rock, Smith's Point, West End, and Williamstown will be closed, effective tomorrow, the 20th of July. 
all congregant activities and gatherings, inclusive of religious services, weddings, funerals, and sporting activities will not be allowed effective Monday, the 20th of July, 2020. Grand Bahama has experienced an increase of 30 new cases over the past two weeks. Health officials are closely monitoring the situation. If efforts to decrease the number of cases are unsuccessful, other restrictive measures may be recommended, including a lockdown beginning Friday, the 24th of July. Let me repeat. If efforts to decrease the number of cases are unsuccessful, other restrictive measures may be recommended, including a lockdown beginning Friday of this week. And therefore, I ask all Grand Bahamians to follow the strict guidelines and the rules of social distancing, sanitizing, and wearing facial masks at the appropriate places. Early identification of contacts is essential for mitigating and control of spread. To enhance the capacity of health officials on the island, in this regard, a seven-member team from the Ministry of Health arrived on Grand Bahama yesterday, Saturday the 18th of July. And this team is assisting with identification testing and mapping of contact, contacts for characterization of the epidemiological situation following the significant increase in the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases on that island. The health team is made up of three physicians, one microbiologist and three nurses who will provide public health and clinical support to the island of Grand Bahama. The team's assistance will include public educational sessions, data gathering exercises, case investigations, contact tracings, as well as sample collection. I wish to make a strong plea to residents of Grand Bahama to cooperate with the health measures put in place. It's essential to curb the spread of this deadly virus within the island of Grand Bahama. And the measures taken are necessary to ensure that the spread does not spread to our other islands which can result in serious stress and strain on our healthcare system. If we address the current increase in confirmed cases as quickly as possible, Grand Bahama can return to a greater sense of normalcy as soon as possible. Let us work together to get Bah Grand Bahama back up and running as quickly as possible. So I ask, I ask Grand Bahama to work in a spirit of unity. I ask Bahamians to work in a spirit of unity in the battle against COVID-19. My fellow Bahamians and residents, I wish to note a number of enforcement measures to assist in our comprehensive national strategy in the battle against this deadly COVID virus. It shall be an offense for a person to submit a falsified result of a COVID-19 diagnostic test or to undergo the test prior, prior to his departure from the Bahamas 
and present the result of the test on his return to the Bahamas as though the test had been carried out in other jurisdictions. Such test only reflects the environment of the Bahamas and not the environment of the hot spot that you may have visited. Such persons are liable to a fine not exceeding $2,000 or two years imprisonment or both. If we are to defeat this COVID pandemic, then we all must be honest and we all must be fair to ourselves and our Bahamas. Additionally, where a person knows or reasonably believes that he, infect, that he is infected with the COVID-19 virus and causes another to be exposed or infected, that person commits an offense and upon summary conviction is liable to a fine not exceeding $1,000 in respect to each person who has been exposed or infected. It shall be an offense for an airline or sea vessel to permit a passenger to board the vessel not wearing a face mask and without an approved travel health card from the Ministry of Health. Upon summary conviction, the operator shall be subject to a fine of $500 in respect of each passenger in violation. It shall be an offense for persons to leave mandatory or self-quarantine before being released by the Ministry of Health. Upon summary conviction, such persons are liable to a fine of $250. My fellow Bahamians and residents, the Royal Bahamas Police Force will continue to be responsible for the monitoring and enforcement of the COVID-19 emergency orders. The new enforcement unit will coordinate activities to educate and ensure that all Bahamians, residents and visitors are adhering to the enforcement protocols of the emergency power orders to keep our communities safe. The Royal Bahamas Police Force is making final preparation for the COVID-19 Command Center at the Cable Beach Police Station from which all hubcat monitors, dispatchers, and COVID-19 ambassadors will be controlled. Across the islands of the Bahamas, the unit will have 177 COVID-19 ambassadors, 23 hubcat monitors, and 21 vehicles dedicated to this specific enforcement purposes. The enforcement unit will also monitor individuals in quarantine, ensure that the general public is adhering to the COVID-19 orders, ensure that business establishments are adhering to the COVID-19 orders, and monitor beaches and parks. We will be doing everything possible to ensure that the health protocols and emergency orders are enforced to limit the spread of this deadly virus and to avoid further restrictive control measures. My fellow Bahamians and residents, I wish to also announce that Dr. Merslin Dial Regis will be stepping down as a special advisor and coordinator of the COVID-19 task force, effective today, Sunday, the 19th of July. Dr. Dahl Regis 
has trained the health team and is confident of their abilities. However, I wish to assure the Bahamian people that she will remain available for further consultation if needed. On behalf of the Bahamian people, I thank Dr. Dahl Regis for her outstanding service. Dr. Regis has put in place strategies, policies, and procedures as it relates to managing COVID-19 and is confident in the team that will be led by our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Pearl Macmillan. My fellow Bahamians and residents, I am pleased to announce that the Honorable Renward Wells will be sworn in tomorrow as the new Minister of Health. Renward Wells is a doer who knows how to get things done. And during my recent tenure as Minister of Health, I consolidated and brought forward a healthcare infrastructure program to upgrade the country's health infrastructure, which I detailed during the recent debate on the 2020-2021 national budget. This includes upgrades to the Princess Margaret Hospital, clinics throughout the country, and planning for a new Rand Memorial Hospital. While the medical officials continue to lead the charge in the health, in the battle against COVID-19, I have instructed Minister Wells to move aggressively to upgrade our healthcare infrastructure. He's also charged with working with public health officials on boosting immunizations and vaccinations for various childhood diseases, some of which have lagged during the COVID-19 pandemic. He will also work with public health officials to improve our readiness for a variety of public health threats, including potential pandemics. I am pleased that Labor Minister, the Honorable Dion Folks, will assume additional responsibility for the Ministry of Transport and Local Government. As the new minister, Minister Folks has extensive cabinet experience. He has prov provided me with wise counsel on many matters. Mr. Travis Robinson will be reinstated as Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism and Aviation, effective tomorrow. Fellow Bahamians and residents, we do not know the long-term effects of this virus. Do not listen to people who tell you it is a mild flu and who inform you that you will be fine. There may be serious long-term effects to people of all ages, effects that diminish quality of life and possibly shorten your life. I want to thank the Bahamian people for following the public health advice. I want to thank Bahamian businesses for enforcing the common sense health measures. We must wear our mask when we are out in public. And we must wear them properly. Your mask should cover your mouth and your nose, not be placed below your nostril. I wish to remind you that it is mandatory to wear a mask or proper face covering in public. It is not good enough to just have it over your mouth with your nose exposed. Physical distancing 
is a key weapon in limiting the spread of this deadly virus. So, we strongly recommend that you stay physically distant. When you are out, maintain your distance. When you do not have to be out, stay at home. If you have no reason to be out, stay at home. And of course, wash or sanitize your hands regularly. Keep them out of your eyes, nose, and mouth. National solidarity is critical in this crisis. We must keep working together, standing together, supporting each other in every possible way we can. Only together we can conquer this virus. Together, we will prevail. We will come out better than before. But if we fight this virus in isolation or as individuals, then we will be defeated. Listen to the advice of the medical professionals. Ignore the nonsense. Some people are circulating on social media and elsewhere, designed to confuse you and to cause strife. Our primary focus in these extraordinary times must stay on saving lives and limiting the spread of this deadly virus. The better we are at this, the more our economy could open up and people could make a living. This crisis is testing nations. It is testing our people. It is testing our resilience. It is testing our faith. And we must remain strong, and we must remain together. There's one common enemy today. That enemy is the COVID virus. We must combine all of our forces and all of our resources. We must combine all of our strengths and all of our energy, all of our education, to fight that one common enemy. And after that enemy is defeated, we can resume the new norm. The countries that come out of this together better will be the disciplined countries. And therefore, Bahamians, I ask each and every one of you today to remain disciplined, to remain focused. The people who come out of this better will definitely be the disciplined people. Countries and peoples who do not follow sensible public health advice and policies will have more deaths, they will have more sickness, and most of all, they will have more chaos. For those who spew negativity or misinformation on social media. Remember that you are not immune to this virus. If you lead our people wrong, then we will all be affected, including you. Bahamians are resilient people. We have survived many hurricanes. And I've, as I've said before, we forged in this spectacular chain of islands the most dynamic tourism economy in the region. And we will get through this. We must get through this. 
I believe we can continue to be a model nation in the world when it comes to our resolve and our response. But we must do this together. Let me remind you that except for the new curfew hours on Grand Bahama, that the curfew hours for all other islands remain 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Let us remain united as a people during what is a marathon to save lives and to protect our country. Before I close, I want to remain, remind Bahamians during this pandemic, do not invite strangers into your home. Individuals who have traveled to hot spots, be careful with inviting them into your home. Be careful with inviting their household into your home. Be careful in entering their homes. Be careful for at least 14 days post their return to our country because they can possibly be contaminated. I repeat, individuals who have traveled to hot spots abroad, beware and be careful of such individuals because they can possibly contaminate, infect you, and you subsequently infecting your entire household. Let us pray to the Almighty for endurance, for strength, for wisdom, and for guidance. I thank you, and good afternoon. <laughs>